Nixon was elected in the 68 election, sort of intimating that he had a secret plan to end the war. The greatest honor history can bestow is the title of peacemaker. In fact, he didn't have a secret plan. He had some amorphous ideas about how to withdraw from Vietnam. But he's still involved in the Cold War and can't afford just to, basically, as Kissinger says, to pick up everything and come home. So the idea becomes, how do you disengage in Vietnam and still give South Vietnam a reasonable chance of surviving after you're gone? And the answer was Vietnamization. As I announced on Tuesday, by December 15th, our troop strength in Vietnam will have been reduced by a minimum of 60,000 men. That was essentially improve the capacity of the South Vietnamese to defend themselves while withdrawing U.S. troops, and at some particular point, they stand up and we stand down. When President Nixon came into power, even though he was withdrawing American troops, he was also fighting very hard to weaken the communists. We thought Nixon was a, a tough candidate. We were reassured by his belligerence. Hell no, we won't go! Hell no, we won't go! We wanted to end the war. We wanted to bring the American soldiers home. We didn't want to have any more dead American boys. 1969 was a critical time in the anti-war movement. There had just been this very popular, very broad participatory moratorium on October 15th, which had involved three million people across the country in all forms of anti-war protest, including what some people described as a general strike. I mean, lots of workplaces had closed down for the day or part of the day. You know, tens of thousands of students didn't show up. So the moratorium had happened, and on November 15th was an incredibly large anti-war demonstration as well. I helped organize busloads of people from Pittsburgh and western Pennsylvania and even parts of northern West Virginia. I sort of ran the stage and Peter Yarrow ran the music and it was a marvelous, marvelous turnout. This was just overwhelming. I mean, I couldn't even imagine, you know, an ocean of people. I remember speakers, I remember music, I remember moving around and marching. I remember a lot of security overhead in helicopters and police presence, especially protecting the White House. And the word was, end the war in Vietnam now, bring the troops home, and lots of wonderful people came. Coretta Scott King was the co-chair with Bill Coffin, Reverend William Sloan Coffin, and she also participated in the March Against Death the night before, where Americans marching held the names of dead American soldiers. In November 1969, Richard Nixon made a speech that's come to be known as the Silent Majority Speech. And in it, he made an appeal to what he described as the silent majority of Americans. They were the people who were not out in the streets protesting, who did not have their voices being heard. And he needed their support in order to negotiate successfully with the Vietnamese. And so tonight, to you, the great silent majority of my fellow Americans, I ask for your support. I pledged in my campaign for the presidency to end the war in a way that we could win the peace. I have initiated a plan of action which will enable me to keep that pledge. On the one hand, he said, we can have this path towards peace, but on the other hand, we don't want to lose. And in order for that to happen, I need you, the silent majority of Americans. After that speech, a majority who polled saying that they sympathized with Nixon and only a large but a minority of folks saying that they were kind of with the protesters. Behind the scenes, I think you see a Nixon that has come to see Vietnam as an example of the limitations of American policy. And when he does articulate what will become known as the, the Nixon Doctrine. I think that doctrine is in fact an admission that there are limits to American power. We shall furnish military and economic assistance when requested in accordance with our treaty commitments. But we shall look to the nation directly threatened to assume the primary responsibility of providing the manpower. And in that sense, it is necessary for the United States to withdraw from Vietnam so 
Nixon and Kissinger can rethink the structure of the Cold War and relationships not only between the United States and Russia, but also with China and I think ultimately with the rest of the world.